And he said, I want to teach you how to pray. But he just didn't want to teach them how to pray. He wanted to teach them how to get results. Because we all pray, but do we get results when we pray? See, it's not, Lord, can we pray? Do we get results? Do we hear back from you, Lord? So he was going to teach them how to get results. So he was teaching them three aspects in prayer. And the first one came in verses 2 through 4. And the first aspect to pray is to know its content. You got to know what it takes in a prayer to get your answer across. So two through four is the content of prayer. Then he teaches that we need to be persistent in prayer. We need to be persistent in prayer. And persistence comes from verses five through 10. Then he teaches that we need to know that God is faithful when we pray in the right content and persistence that God's faithful, his faithfulness. And then knowing that God is faithful is knowing that we believe God on his word. So those are the three things that he teaches the disciples and us about prayer. First, it's content. Second, our persistence. And third, God's faithfulness. Amen? Amen. We're going to deal with this one at a time. And I'm not going to take long to do it. So get with me fast. Because it's a very simple process. Lord, do you hear me when I pray? We need to know it's content. Everything we need to know about talking to God is in verses 2 through 4. And it says, when ye pray, pray of this. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. As in heaven, so in earth, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. It's content. That Two through four is what should be in a prayer. We need to, first of all, praise God. Praise God first. Look, next time, before you pray, I don't care who you are, before you pray, you better praise God first. Don't just jump on your knees and start giving God, God a shot list. Get him, get him, Lord, get him. No, you need to praise God first. God, I thank you that I have needs to give. I thank you that I even have a place to pray. I thank you, Lord, for the clothes on my back. I thank you for the food that you have on my table. If I don't have any food, I thank you that I can still talk to you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that I have a family that loves me. I thank you that I have a job. If I don't have a job, I'm still thanking you because I got my health control. You need to thank God and praise God first. That's the first thing we all do. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. If we're not praising God first, what are we doing? So Jesus teaches, say, Lord teaches how to pray. He's teaching. First thing, praise God first. Second thing, in its content, we need to know that God gives daily provision. He gives daily provision. God is not a one time and only, a once and for all God. He gives daily provisions. Day by day, he gives us provisions. Every morning that you wake up, he gives you provisions. Every morning that you can look in the mirror, he gives you provisions. He gives us provisions on a regular basis. We don't just hit God and that's it. Some people think they can come to God. Well, I came to church four Sundays straight, and that's enough. Well, what happens when you run out? Well, God, I think I filled up my car this week, but I'm going to have to go back to the gas station eventually. If I don't, what's going to happen? And that's what happens to saints all the time. They come to, they come to church and they feel like, well, that's it. Come to church when I, when I feel like I got to do something, when I have to do something, then I come to church. If I got to sing, then I come to church. If I got to usher, then I come to church. If I preach and say, if I got to preach, then I'll come to church. But that's not giving God daily provisions. That's like somebody needs you. God don't need me to preach. He got plenty of preachers. He don't need people to sing if they just think they hear the same on Sunday. They got plenty of singing. He don't need people to usher because they, that's all they need. They got plenty of usher. Don't need people to school. Don't need people to trust him. Don't need people to do all that. God gives daily provision. If he blesses us daily, what makes us think we can take a day off? Tell 
might need to say amen. I don't need to This is good stuff. Amen? And you know, when you preach the good stuff, if I'm guilty, I'm going to say out. If you're guilty, say out. If not, but you need to have something to take. But God gives us daily provisions. And we need to know this. We praise in God for his daily provisions. And just because we don't feel like doing it, God's still giving us daily provisions because we still woke up that morning. And if you're waking up praising God, you're going to be what God will have you to be. Somebody needs to go, oh, oh, yeah. Lord, teach us how to pray. See, when the disciples ask, when this disciple asks God, Jesus to teach him how to pray, he didn't know what he was looking for. Okay? But praising God and praising God for his what? Daily provisions, and then he says this. Then he says, third thing we need to have in this content is forgiveness. If you don't know how to forgive, and if you don't forgive, God cannot forgive you. That's not me saying it, that's the word. It says, Jesus said, and forgive us our sins as we also forgive everyone that is indebted or that is in sin to us. Amen. It's right there in the word. So if you can't forgive me, how do you expect God to forgive you? If I can't forgive you, how do I expect God to forgive me? So this needs to be in the content of our prayer. And then we say, Lord, do you hear me when I pray? Uh, have you forgiven so-and-so? If this isn't, the, if you don't have this in the content, now you say, well, I wake up every morning, yes, because God has grace and mercy right now. But grace and mercy don't equate the favor. Jesus is trying to teach them how to have the favor of God in their life. Meaning that the favor of God is when everybody is in the crowd. God is picking you out to do something. And grace and mercy may be in the crowd, but God's favor may be pulling you out of the crowd. Like Peter, when he was in the boat with the disciples, and the boat was rocking, and Jesus was walking on the water. And Peter said, Jesus, that you bid me to come. And Jesus said, come. Well, the other disciples stayed in the boat, but Peter had stepped out because he had Jesus' favor. And he stopped walking because it was in the favor of God. In the favor. Amen. So forgiveness puts us in the frame of mind that we can be forgiven of God. Amen? Amen. Second, aspect in prayer is persistence. Persistence. Don't stop believing God. No, 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 no. <laughs> we need to be persistent. And being persistent started at verse 5. It says, which of you have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, friend, lend me three loaves for a friend of mine is in his journey to come to me and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut, and my children are all in bed. I cannot rise and give thee, I say, because, but I said to you, though he would not rise and give unto him because of his friends, yet because of the inopportunity, he will arise and give him as many as he needs. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and ye shall find, knock, and the door shall be opened. For everyone that asks receives, everyone that seeketh finds, and everyone that knock, the door will be open unto you. Our persistence, don't stop believing God. We need to ask, we need to seek, and we need to knock. We need to ask like our life dependent on it. We need to seek like our life dependent on it. We need to knock like our life dependent on it. Don't stop pressing God for what we need. Because when we pray, persistence helps us in our prayer with our heart. Because when we pray, we know that God is still listening. That's why we're praying. Because if we're praising, and if we're giving God the glory, and if we're forgiving, we are praying and we are pressing God. And praying and persisting lets us, helps us with our heart, helps us with us believing God. Because we always have a hearing father to pray to. We cannot wear God out. We cannot worry God. You know, the more we pray, if we have the content right, God wants to hear what we have to say. It's when our content is all mixed up that things get um, scrambled and we don't get the results that we need. But God wants to hear us when we pray. But if we have the content in, we can be persistent and we can 
be persistent as long as we need to, and God will come through. It may not be this afternoon, it may not be tomorrow, but believe me, God will come through because of our persistence. And Jesus was given the example. You know, because of somebody's um, in our, in opportunity or just because they're inconvenience, they give to you. God is much better than that. He will bless us much more than that if we just continue to keep our minds steadfast on him. If anything, if our content is right, if we're persistent, God knows that we know that he's still there. Because yeah. too many people forget that God is still there and they just go on their own. I mean, they forget that God is still there. So God wants us to be persistent. Jesus is telling them now, just keep going. Ask. Seek. Knock. Just keep going. Just be persistent. God knows that you're there. He just wants you to have the right content and just be persistent about it. Just go on. Every hero in the Bible was persistent in their prayer life. They just didn't say, God bless me, and go about their business. And then get mad because God didn't do something. No, they had the content right. Then after they had the content right, they were persistent about it. Which means they were persistent in their prayer life. They were persistent in their worship life. They were persistent in their worship experience. They were persistent in everything that they do. They were faithful. They were committed to where God had placed them. They weren't here, there, everywhere. They were committed to where God had them. And they were persistent and they kept pressing God. Whatever God gave them to do, they, had, they did it. They kept pressing. They were persistent. They did not get off track. They did not get sidetracked. They were persistent in their prayer. That's why Jesus said, ask, 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 and it shall be given. See, 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 and ye shall find. Knock, 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 and the door will be open to you. Be persistent. Some of us give up too quick. Well, I prayed for that job, and, you know, it's been three months, and God had an answer. So I'm giving up. Don't give up. Because most people, when they give up, they give up just before a breakthrough. Yeah. And I'm not talking about a light at the end of the tunnel either. I'm talking about a breakthrough in your life. So don't give up. People give up on relationships. Don't give up. Be persistent. Keep praying. If you have your content right, God will get into a relationship and change the person's whole demeanor. But before he changes that person's demeanor, he's trying to get us right first. Because see, sometimes it's not the thing that we need, it's what's in us that God is trying to change. Because as we pray to God, what happens is something happens on the inside of us. And what it's doing is preparing us so that when that prayer is answered or when that prayer comes made known, we are ready to receive it. When we're persistent. Because you can't go to God and pray to God and come back the same. You can't go to God and mean rattlesnake and pray to him and come back with mean rattlesnake. <laughs> Amen. You, you just can't do that. You can't go to God sour and pray to God and then still sour. If you're doing that, you're praying wrong. Any sour people in the house? <laughs> if you do, you're praying wrong. So Jesus is teaching them how to pray. I don't know if they wanted to hear it, but if we want to be fixed, we need to hear it. Amen? Amen. Number three, third aspect in prayer. And this is the last one. Jesus is day three. And this is um, 11 through 13. And this is God's faithfulness. And he said, if a son shall ask bread of you, <clears throat> excuse me, if a son shall ask any, ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a stone? If he then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly father give? the Holy Spirit unto them that ask him. God's faithfulness. God's faithfulness. God is always faithful. It's never a time in any of our lives when God has not been faithful. When we woke up this morning, we know that God is still faithful. It's not, the devil's not faithful. The devil can't create a day. The devil can't make this world turn. 
The devil can't bring air out of the sky. The devil can't um, put stars up in heaven. The devil can't make the sun burn like a dove. The devil can't place a moon. So the devil can't be God is faithful every time we see those things. The devil can't grow a tree. But God is faithful every time we wake up. God is faithful. And we need to know that God is faithful. God is faithful and he's so faithful that he gave us Jesus Christ, his only begotten son. He's so faithful that he gave him to us to be a living example of how we need to step when we step on this place. He's been so faithful that he just didn't give him to us. He had him placed in a place where he was tortured, where he was lied on, where he was spit upon, where he was beaten with um, re when you couldn't even recognize his um, um, total physique. He was placed in a place where he was killed. And that just killed. God watched his son be buried all of us because he was faithful. He didn't do that for nothing. He did that for you. He did that for me because he is faithful. For God so loved the world that whosoever believeth in his son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And if we believe Jesus Christ today, God is faithful because God promised us everlasting life through his son, our Lord Jesus Christ. So God is faithful. He's been faithful over time, over from generation to generation. God's been faithful. And God's so faithful that he blessed us and he's given us the very best that he had. He gave us the very best that he had. So Jesus is saying that this needs to be caught, caught up in your prayer. You need to know that when you pray, you're praying with content, you're praying with persistence, and you're praying because you know that God is faithful. Because God's going to answer your prayer. See, if we don't believe God's going to answer our prayer, we don't think God's faithful. If we don't believe God's going to answer our prayer, oh, I'm tired of praying to God. He ain't going to answer. You don't believe God is faithful. And if you don't believe God is faithful, that's when the devil loves you. Well, you don't have no God now, who you going to lean on? And the devil's out there waiting, but God is faithful. So we can't stop believing that he is faithful. He is going to answer our prayer. If we have the content, if we're persistent, and if we know that he's going to answer our prayer, because we can't give up our faith, because without faith it is impossible to please God. So we need to keep that intact. We need to keep it strong. We need to keep ourselves holy before him. We need to keep ourselves in God's face all the time. So when the church doors open, I tell you, if our prayer life is intact, we need to be running to the church. When the church doors open, we need to be there on Sunday, on Wednesday, on Thursday, on Friday, on Saturday. Whenever we need to be coming, praying to God, I know your faith. Holy be your name. I know be your name, God. You know what? I've been <coughs> blessed to have an opportunity to um, take some chaplain courses, which um, puts me on call at Hospital Center. And I was, and being on call, you work 13 hour shifts. And part of it is every time a MedStar, they give us a little page, every time MedStar pages us, we need to run to MedStar. That's the like the trauma unit. And the other night, they had paid um, me, and I went to bed and it was these two young men, 16 and 18, they were brothers. They had stolen a car. And the police had come in with them, because whenever you steal a car, you get, you get your friends, and all the police come in with them that had gotten them from the um, stolen car heist. And I was talking to the younger brother, the 16-year-old, I asked him how he was doing. And he said he was doing all right, and yes. And I said, I said, what well, what you hear? Oh, we, we just driving in the car. He didn't tell me they stole the car. I found out from the police. He said they were just joyriding. So I said, how many people got hurt in the accident? He said, oh, I hurt my leg and my brother hurt his head. And one of the policemen were here and said, you didn't tell the chaplain about the three policemen that y'all hurt when y'all were trying to get away? He said, but well, I was there probably because they shouldn't have been trying to catch us in the first place. Oh, really? And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Mm. Say, what are and then they, got, then they started cussing at the policeman in men's style, saying, y'all, this, that, this, who, I, who, that, the one of the And as they did all that, they said, and the woman, I don't know why she had her car there anyway, but she didn't have enough gas. The car that they stole, they were men at the lady that they stole the car from because she didn't have enough gas so they could get away. Mm. <laughs> and I looked at the young man's ankle and he had one of those little devices on it. Oh. One of those strapping devices.
devices. So how are they going to get away when they track them? <laughs> what, then what are you thinking? I said, what, what is your faith? Who do you pray to? Islam. I said, do you think he would be pleased? Yeah. Young men. Black, I mean, they, they weren't foreign. They were from here. But how things twist people's minds when they lose the power of prayer in their life and lose focus on the true and living God, lose focus on Jesus Christ, and lose focus on what Jesus Christ has done for them, and he would have none of what I offer. All I could offer was my presence, and the police will handle you. Because that, that's where he was going. He was going to jail. But he didn't want nothing at all. Now, his older brother, who's 18, who happened to be driving the vehicle, he happened to be a Protestant, which means he was of the Christian faith. Right. And he showed a little regret, but he still didn't want the prayer. See, well, when we say things like we need to pray for each other, we need to pray for our kids. I tell you, we need to know a solid example of how to pray for each other. And how to pray because we never, we never, it's no game out here. We're praying because we need to get results. And the only way to get results is to know what's in the prayer, how to be persistent in it, and know that God will answer prayer because he's always faithful. And we can't stop doing it because our children's lives and our lives are dependent too much upon us speaking to God. Because if we can't talk to God, we have no way of having victory in this place. So we need to pray, and we need to pray for results. Because we need to know what's in the prayer, we need to stop praising God. You can't sit on God. You can't sit on God and have praise for everything that he's done for you. I tell you, if God done anything for you, if I say wave your hand, everybody should be stuffing on the fuse and just jumping up and down. Because I know God done something for you. If you say God ain't done nothing for you, you are lying. Has God done anything for you? Has God done anything for you? That praise Has God done anything for you, church? That praise word. See, once we get that down, once we know what's in it, and once we get it all around, we can start praying with persistence. God, I'm praying to you, and I'm persistent, but I'm praying to you most because I just love talking to you. See, if you ever, well, most men, when they get in love with a woman, they can't stop talking to her. Well, it's not until after they get married, so I'm not talking. But people they ain't trying to get up, they can't stop talking to her. Oh, and it's that, oh, they are persistent. I mean, they take her out on a date, have a nice dinner. When they get home, they go on the phone, they still talking to her. Talk to her at 4 or 5 in the morning. Hang up, get a couple hours of sleep, call her back at 7 a.m. Oh, baby, I just missed you. Oh, they just keep talking about That's persistent. That's being persistent. Because they love us so much. How much do you love God? Are you persistent enough to talk to Him every time that they have a chance? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's been that's been in love with God. See, love is being persistent with Him. So when we are persistent, God knows that we love Him. When we have all the blocks in place, so we know the content. We know that we love Him because we're persistent, and we know we're persistent because He is faithful. And when we get all of this. We can answer that question. Lord, do you hear me when I pray? And the answer would be yes. 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 Amen? Yes. Amen. Lord hears us when we pray. And it may have been somebody here today praying. God wants to open itself to you. But now that we open up ourselves and we look at prayer maybe in another way, 